What a morning. Oh, Pastor Kathy, that word was absolutely powerful. Sweetie, could you bring me my water? Okay, thank you so much. No, you're fine. Thank you. All right. Oh, what a word. What a morning. What a time in the presence of the Lord. You know, I'll tell you what, the work that goes, the collaboration that an event takes in order to come together, all the energy, combined energies in this place, we just, let's just thank Pastor Kathy and her team for hosting this beautiful day for us, beautiful weekend for us. And like I said last night, there are just no words. There are no words, Kathy, to tell you how much I love you and appreciate you. Because, you know, you have to really be trusted for a pastor to open their pulpit up to you and to allow you to pour into people, their people. And so, so blessed at the church, uh, the Center Point Church in Dallas that's here. Um, goodness, I can't wait to hear about what God does there. It's just so exciting, isn't it? What God's doing everywhere because God is moving. All right, let's stand up one more time together. Just kind of shake it off, shake off the tires, the yawns, all that stuff. And we're going to rock. Jesus is going to finish rocking the house today. And then as we leave, it's going to be dynamic at the testimonies that come pouring in of what God's doing through you everywhere you go. Oh my goodness, I'm already excited to hear all about it because I know God's up to something. Can you say that with me? God's up to something. He's up to something really amazing and we get to be part of it. All right, give your sister a hug and you can be seated. I don't know if you saw what I just did, but I moved my water off that table. Let me tell you why. So I was feeling all cute this morning. You know, I left, left our room um, where we were staying and um, was ready to go, had my water. Oh, wow, is that thunder? Wow. Woo, God is moving. God's doing something, isn't he? And he thunders. Okay, so... So anyway, so, so my husband, Johnny, uh, was dr driving me to the meeting this morning, and I had my Diet Coke with the lid off, and I had drank maybe half of it, so I never even thought for one second that I, of all people, would spill it all over myself, right? So I'm getting out of the car. I've got my notebook. I've got my purse thrown over my shoulder and my Diet Coke, right? And it just turns just like this and went... So I don't know if y'all saw me coming in. I was soaked front and back. There's no guys in here, are there? I mean, it was like disgusting. And I thought, oh, I look so cute. What happened? What was this? So I walked through the front door and I said, does anybody have a blow dryer? And Pastor Pat happened to be sitting in his office. He received the, the news that he needed to find, you know, which is the news he wanted to get, right? That he, it was, was going to be his, his assignment for the day was to get a blow dryer. And it just so happens, one of the girls of the church, stand up, happen to have a blow dryer. I love you. I love you. I love you. She knows the voice of the Holy Ghost. Because she threw her blow dryer. I thought it was one of the Dallas girls. Because I thought, well, of course, that makes sense. They would bring their blow dryer, you know, if they needed to do their hair. And no, sister lives here. And her daughter's the one that plays the drums. Was that not incredible? That was, is she, is she in here? You are stinking awesome. Amazing. Look at you using your gifts. Listen to what God's saying about it. So cool. So mom was going to dry her hair in the car because sister had to be here early to practice the drums. So she gets in her car because she's got a way that she can run her hair dryer of a car, and it didn't work. See, God knew, God knew I was going to dump Diet Coke all over myself and be a mess. God knew the hair dryer wasn't going to work for her because she was supposed to wear the cutest ponytail in the world this morning. And there she happened. See, isn't God good? See, He takes care of me. I'm telling you, God takes care of me. Thank you for 
listening to God and being obedient. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm telling you, God cares. All right, say this with me. I refuse to quit. I refuse to give up. I am not a quitter. I'm a finisher. And God has an assignment. God has a purpose for me. I was born for this moment. I am ready. I am strong. And I am determined. And I will do it. Say that again. And I will do it. Say it again. Say it again. One more time. I will do it. Just do it. Just do it. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about today. Is stewarding the gift that's on the inside of you. Stewarding the, you know, it's one thing to know you've got a gift. It's another thing to start using your gift. And it's another thing to steward your gift. To be a good steward of the gift that God's put in you. And so I had been, I had been teaching on this in some other places where I've been. And the Lord gave me a visual just like the lights yesterday, the Christmas tree. See, you're never gonna, you're never gonna forget that, are you? When you see a, a string of Christmas tree lights, if one's missing, you're gonna go, uh, somebody's disconnected somewhere, right? Okay, so I saw these cups of water. And let's look at this bottle of water. This is the capacity. It's full capacity, isn't it? Full capacity. So let's just pretend like this is your life. This is my life. And we have so many opportunities to be distracted with so many things where we use our capacity and we pour. We pour from ourselves into things, into situations, into circumstances, into emotions that arise and to different things that happen in our life. And sometimes we get down to where we feel like we don't have much left to give. And then here comes the very thing that we're called to do, the very thing we're assigned to do, the very purpose we were created for, and there's very little left. Why? Because we're not stewarding our capacity well. And so what I want you to do is I want you to learn how to be a good steward and to protect and to guard and, and to contend with your faith for what God's put on the inside of you. And we pray, Father God, let me be a good steward because you know what? I want more. I want more. I want more. I don't know about you. I want more. I am stingy. I am, I am just... I wanted to say a pig for the anointing. That doesn't sound very nice. But I just want more. When I hear God's doing something, it's like, God, what about me? What about me, God? I, I don't want to miss out on one thing you're doing. I, don't, I want more. I want more. So in order to gather more, to gain more, to walk into the increase, to walk into the more, we have to steward what we already have, all right? So I want to read you Ephesians 3.20, and I know y'all know this, but, you know, just um, fancy me if you would. Um, I want to read this to you from the Passion Bible. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, it's not in here. All right, we know this verse, though, don't we? Does somebody have this pulled up on their phone in the Passion Bible, Ephesians 3.20? Okay, I'll do it real fast. See, I had that already so I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. Stumbling around. Look at your neighbor and say, God is so good. God is so, so good. I'm telling you, he is so, 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 so good. He is, I'm going to keep saying it here. Okay, here we go. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. He will achieve infinitely more, say more, infinitely more, infinite more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. Oh my goodness, I love this verse. This is my verse in the Bible. You may, you may, I'll share it with you, but I'm telling you this verse was written for me. He wants to do infinitely more, infinitely more than your greatest request, than your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. God is a more God. 
He's a God of more. If we are believing God for more, a greater capacity, we must learn how to steward the capacity we are currently carrying. Now listen, the Lord spoke this to me in prayer the other day. When we learn to steward the capacity within us, he will reward the capacity within us. When we learn to steward the capacity, he will reward the capacity within us. Think of Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given. Use what you have to create what you want. If what I hold in my hand isn't enough to be my harvest, guess what I do? I make it my seed. Because it has the potential to become everything I need and more. And that goes with not just finances, but the way we live our life. So as we give, what does it say? It is given to us. How is it given back? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. God will cause gifts and men and favor and every good thing that comes from the Father God above to be poured into our life. There's an increased measure that comes back once something is planted. So I wrote this down. A seed is just a seed until it's planted. I don't care the potential in that seed. That seed, until it's planted, next year, you know what it's going to look like? A seed. A little crunchy, hard seed. But something supernatural happens when that seed is put down in the soil and is watered and given light. The same way a gift is just a gift until it's activated. A gift is just a gift. An anointing is just an anointing. The potential is there for greatness. The potential is there for something amazing to happen. But nothing happens until we do what? We start moving. Until we activate that gift. Until we give ourselves to do what is before us to do. So here's your assignment from me for today. Because it's too much for me to read. But I want you to look at Matthew 25, verses 14 through 29 in the Passion Translation. And I want, you, um, I want you to read that entire passage. I'm just going to read a part, a, a small portion of it. It says, again, heaven's kingdom is like a wealthy man who went on a long journey and summoned all of his trusted servants. And he assigned his financial management over to them. Before he left on his journey, he entrusted a bag of 5,000 gold coins to one of his servants, to another a bag of 2,000 gold coins, and to the third a bag of 1,000 gold coins. Now listen to this. Each according to his ability to manage. Now listen to what the Lord spoke to me. God has not, say has not, given or entrusted you to you more than what you have the ability to steward, to walk out, to develop, and to manage. But as you manage and put to use what you have, you will receive more. Say more. Raise your hand if you want more. Amen. We all want more, don't we? And when he gives me more, then you know what I always say? I want more. God wants you to want more. It's okay to want more. Ephesians 3.20 is his answer for that. I'm able. He said, I'm able to do abundantly above and beyond, exceed your wildest dream. God wants you to dream wild. God wants you to imagine huge. God wants, let me tell you, God does nothing small. His desire is to do nothing small. He wants to do bigger, 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 bigger. He wants this church packed out next year. He wants this, there, there, ch more chairs to have to be brought in. More. God wants to do what? God wants to do more. What does he want to do? He wants to do more. Commending his servants. Well done to the one that had, had let me see if I can find my place here. Commanding his servant, the master replied, you have done well and have proven yourself to be my loyal and trustworthy servant. Because you were faithful to manage a small sum, because you were faithful to manage a small sum, now I will put you in charge of much more. No, you know what this says in the, the Passion? Much, much more. 
because you were able to manage a small sum. Now, he said, I'm going to give you much, much more to manage. And now listen to what he says. You will experience the delight of your master who will say, enter into the joy of the Lord. I love that. There is a joy that comes when, when you use and utilize the capacity you've been given, and he gives you much, much more. That is totally off the charts exciting. Because as he can trust us with just a little bit, then he gives us more and more and more. And that's where the more comes. It's like, what are you doing with what you've got? So I want you to think about that for a minute. Inventory. Inventory in your brain real quick. What am I doing? Boy, God's into this message, isn't he? That's an amen and a hallelujah. Preach it, Tanya. Preach it. I'm telling you, God is in to increase. Increase was God's idea from the beginning of time. He said inside, inside the seed is a picture of what that seed has the potential to become. And he said, a seed produces after its own kind. An apple seed, when you plant it, you don't ever expect to see an orange come from that, do you? What do you expect to get? Apples. Truth. You don't plant tulips and get daisies. Because on the inside of those, that seed is a picture of a tulip or the bulb, how, whatever it is, because I don't grow anything. And then, you know, if somebody gives me something to grow, then it's dead, and I look at it and go, what in the world happened? Oh, I, you know, I never watered it. So that's ne never a good gift for me. But stewardship is serious business to God. Stewardship. Let me tell you, God is serious about the call on your life. He is most serious about you doing what he's called you to do. So, as I was sitting there this morning, one of the beautiful girls here, where is Dakota? Dakota, wave at me, sweet baby. She said, how did you start doing what you're doing? I worked in the nursery. I was the janitor of the church. I took over nursery ministry because I went to my pastor and I said, I want to know what the biggest problem for you is in this church. He said, the nursery. The nursery is a pain for me right now. No, I said, okay, give it to me. Do you trust me to have it? Absolutely. He was more than happy to give me the nursery. Gave me the nursery. And I was determined this department in this church is going to be the best department in this church. I would pray over that ministry. I taught those babies. Uh, in fact, one of Pat and Kathy's nieces, I had her in, in my nursery school, in my nursery class. And she's still walking with God, still walking with God. I prayed over those babies. I anointed that room. I made the nursery so much fun. Everybody wanted to sign up and work in the nursery with me. And so then from there, I went to pastor and I said, Pastor, okay, we've got the nursery running good. What's the next biggest problem? He said, the janitorial department of this church is horrible. I said, will you trust me with the janitorial department? So I said, that's what I want to do. There was a need, and I was willing. It wasn't about, am I called to do the janitor? It doesn't make any difference. The need was there was something I could do. I had the capacity for it. So guess what I did? Man, I would sweep, and as I swept, I prayed in the Spirit all through that church. We cleaned toilets. We cleaned that church every single week. And we made that so exciting and so awesome, everybody started wanting to clean the church. So we got that ministry set up and going. So then, I don't know how many of y'all are, are familiar with the Assemblies of God Church. We were an Assembly of God Church. It was an amazing church. And they asked me if I would teach on a Wednesday night. It's the Royal Ranger Missionette Program, and they were called Rainbows. Rainbows are the littlest, the, the littles of that program. And I said, absolutely, get, give them to me. I'll never forget my first my first class with them, I went down to my class. I was, I was pumped. I thought, everybody's going to be jealous that I got this class. They're going to wish they had this. And they had, the children were already in class, and they had locked me out. These are the littles, right? Like, well, I'm going to say maybe 
five, I mean, big, obviously old enough to know how to lock doors and think it was funny, right, that you couldn't get in. And I'll never forget, I was standing there knocking at the door saying, okay, let me in. I'm here to teach. We're going to have such a great time. And one of the adults walked in and said, that's not how you get in the door. And they beat on that door and they said, you open this door right now. So I took that, that rainbow class and taught it and taught it and taught it and loved it and loved it until then God opened another door. I took the bus at one of the bus routes of our church. I was pregnant beyond belief. And is Jessica, Jessica's the one that's pregnant, right? Jessica. I said, Jessica, you don't even look like you're going to have a baby. You should have seen me when I did bus ministry. I so looked like I was going to have one, maybe two babies. I mean, my feet would swell up. And you know what I do? I'd canvas my route. We went out on Saturdays and knocked on doors to get babies to uh, parents to let their children ride the bus. I had the most incredible bus ministry. Then I went from there to choir ministry. Then I went from there. Any place there was an open door, I took it. What is that called? I'm just giving you examples. If you want your gift to be used, it may be what your passion is, but it very may, very well may be a need. We plant ourselves in a need. And I know what's on the inside of me so that anywhere I plant myself, I know what's going to happen. Favor, increase, and blessing. Say that with me. Favor, increase, and blessing. Say it again. Favor, increase, and blessing. And every single thing I ever set my hand to do, it was favor, increase, and blessing. Then we went into youth ministry. That youth ministry in that church exploded. Within about a month, we were running like 80 to 100 kids in our youth ministry. Why? Favor, blessing, increase, increase, increase. I'm telling you, from there, associate pastors, and from there, senior pastors. Then we started developing Bible schools. I began to write curriculum for a Bible college. We had a Christian school. I was the headmaster of that school. And I just, when the board came to me and said, Tanya, we want you to be the headmaster. You know, I had no education to be the headmaster of a, of a Christian school with the kind of curriculum. I mean, we're talking, it, it's insane how smart those kids are, and the stuff that they do. And I thought, dear God, but you know what? The board knew I had the favor of God on my life. The board knew that I walked with the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, I was responsible for all of the, the finances that had to be raised, all of our fundraising, all of that, plus all the ministry of the church. I did our administration for that. But I said, absolutely. And so you know what I did? I said, God, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to take that staff, and I'm going to act like I know exactly what I'm doing. I did not know the first thing about what I was supposed to do. And you know what? I have the favor of God on my life. Increase, blessing, and favor. What happened in that school? Increase, blessing, and favor. Funds were there. Funds were always raised. And why? Have you got it? Increase, blessing, and favor. Why? The willingness of a heart to plant and to serve, it will be the, I'm telling you, if you'll, if you'll ad adopt this idea and this mindset, and what I do, I have a teaching I do called Masterpiece Mindset. Masterpiece Mindset. If we'll develop the right mindset about our capacity and the anointing and the call and the abilities and the capabilities and the skills and the giftings that God put on the inside of us, there's nothing you can't do. Then I started traveling all over the world preaching the word, preaching the word, preaching the word. Anytime God opened a door, I just said yes. I said yes. A year before Pastor Kathy called me and asked me to speak at last year's conference, the Lord gave me a dream that, and told me I was supposed to come here and I was supposed to speak at a women's conference. And I thought, well, you tell her that then because I am not going to tell Kathy. Oh, Kathy, by the way, God, God said I'm supposed to come and do a women's conference with you. And a year later, she reached out to me, and I just bathed it in prayer and just kept saying, Father God, if that's a door you want opened, you'll open that door for me. And then I got invited back. I mean, how cool is God? God wants to do that for you. He wants to open doors you could never open for yourself. 
God will do that. The most outrageous, crazy, unbelievable things that you can even imagine. And he'll bring you through it to get you to it. Listen to me. He'll bring you through it to get you to it. One of my first mission experiences was I was actually in Mexico. And they were taking us to a village where they had never seen any white man before. And on, so, so they let me preach that night. And I'm telling you, they brought people in horse trailers. They'd open the gate of those trailers and people would pour out, pour out, pour out. There were lepers that were there. I'm telling you, I was like a little girl in a candy store. I, it was the most exciting thing I think I'd ever experienced. Well, so when we left, it was three hours back into the major city. So it was like way in the middle of the night when we got back home. But we were stopped at the port. And I was the only one they asked to get out of the car. And they held, held M16 machine guns on me. There were probably six, six to eight of them. But you know what? When you are in the will of God, I walked in the perfect peace of God. I wasn't bothered by that. Not, not, not even this much. I'm telling you, God will get you through it to get you to it. Amen? God will get you through it. And that's, that's part of what our message is on today. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2 in the Passion, it says, Beloved friends. Now, this is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. Now, listen to what he says. Beloved friends, because of my love for Jesus Christ, I am now his prisoner. For the sake of all of you, say that with me. For the sake of all of you. Say it again. For the sake of you. Yeah. For the sake of all of you. I, he said, I am now his prisoner for your sake who are not Jews. So that you will hear the gospel that God has entrusted to me to share with you. What you have been given is not for you. It's for the benefit and the purpose to deposit and to pour into others. Our gift isn't for us to sit up on a shelf and dust it off and make it look beautiful and talk about it. The gift on the inside of you is for you to use to make a difference in the lives of other people. Every single one of us, not just me, not just me. I'm telling you, look at your sister and say she's talking about you. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the gift. That's why I'm here, to stir you up, to notice, to challenge you. If you don't know what it is, find it. Say, find it. Find it. That's your assignment. Find out what it is. You seek God. You pray. You ask him what it is. Another woman in the church was sharing with me how she sat down and said, God, I've got to know what it is you've called me to do. I've got to know what my gift is. I've got to know what my assignment is. And she sat there and she wept before the Lord and she sat there and she sat there. And she said when she got up, it wasn't 30 minutes till somebody called her for prayer. It was just a few minutes, somebody else called her for prayer. And you know what God's doing? She's a prayer warrior. She's a praying machine. All because she said yes. She found her purpose. If you want to know your purpose, you will find your purpose. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, God's assignment, just like Pastor Kathy said in, in her message, it, your, the seasons of our life change. I don't, do, I don't do nursery work right now. It'd be amazing if I did. Your babies would love it if I did. We would have so much fun you can't even imagine. But I'm telling you, God will begin to use you in many different places and areas. So the Lord took us to Corey and Bethany's church this, this past year. And, the, and so, so needless to say, um, we're working in that church. We're watching lives be changed. We're watching lives be transformed. We're watching people be discipled in the things of God. We have a, we, I started a women's ministry in our church called Praise Sisters. But I asked Pastor, I said, Pastor, what do we need? He said, we need greeters. We need greeters. I said, oh, that's the perfect place for me. The perfect place for me is to be a greeter. So guess what I'm doing now? We're, we're, so we've started greeters. And guess what? It's not going to be long and everybody's going to want to be a greeter. Because you know what? God moves at the front door of our church. God moves at the front door of our church. I'm telling you, if we will respond to, to, to what God is doing from the moment your feet come through that front door until the very end of the service, you're engaged. You're responding to the Holy Spirit. You're part of what God's doing. God will get you through it so he can take you to it. 
Amen. What you have been given is for the benefit of others. All right, so number one, I want you to say yes. Don't quit. Don't give up. Get up. Look at your neighbor. Say, don't give up, but get up. Get up. It's time to say yes. You may say, my life doesn't make any sense right now. Pastor Tanya, I've got problems, I've got issues, I don't understand, I'm in church, I'm speaking the word, I'm spending time in prayer, I don't get what I'm going through. Now let me tell you this, you may not get it now, but if you won't quit, you will walk into a place, a season, and a time, you will get it. You will understand why you went through what you went through. You have to trust him when you don't get it before you will get it. You have to trust him when nothing makes sense, when nothing looks right. You have to trust him when you can't figure out what to do. You have to trust him when you don't get it before you will get it. So we're going to settle it in our heart right now that it's non-negotiable. We are not quitters in this house. Amen. I'm serving the devil. Notice we are not quitters in this house. I will never quit. I will never quit. I will never quit. Non-negotiable. Not even something we're going to have a conversation about. I'm going to run my race until Jesus calls me home or comes back, whichever might be first. I'm running my race. I'm running until. I'm running until. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Get up. You know, I believe that there's so many of you this morning that are right on the edge of a breakthrough. I want you to listen to this. Proverbs 24, 16. I, shared, I think I shared this with you last night. For the lovers of God may suffer adversity. He never said we weren't going to have problems. I don't know where Christians get the idea that when we get born again, we just we, we are assigned a cloud that has our number on it, and we're just going to float around looking good, no problems, life is gravy. No, he never said that. He never promised us a life that was going to be problem-free. He promised us a power that would take us through and take us to the other side. Amen? He promised he would never leave us or forsake us, and he never fails. God always wins. Have you noticed that from Genesis? And if you read ahead in the book through, through Revelation, God wins. I don't care what the world looks like right now. Guess what? Because God wins. God, God wins. He said that darkness would cover the earth and gross darkness. And the closer we get to the return of Jesus, he said the darkness is going to become greater and greater and greater and greater. But he said, but the light on the church is going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and bright. I'm just going to get better. I don't care what it looks like out there. I know what he has called for me. My expectation is not on what the world says. My expectation and my hope comes from an unshakable place. See, I've got the kingdom on the inside of me. And the Bible, Paul told the church, he said, you're part of an unshakable kingdom. I don't care what the devil throws. I'm not going to be shaken. Amen? I am not going to be shaken. We're part of an unshakable kingdom. Some promotions, now listen to this. Some promotions only come from adversity and closed doors. You won't reach your destiny without a problem. So this is my advice. Get up. Amen? Get up. We've sat down long enough. We've sat back long enough. It's time for us to arise. It's time for us to arise. Say this with me. On the other side of my problem is my promotion. It's time for me to get up. On the other side of my problem is my promotion. So next time a problem comes, just say, oh, Father God, I just sense a promotion is on the way to me. I'm on my way to a promotion. You've got a problem, we'll just start shouting. God, I'm on my way to a promotion. God, there must be something amazing getting ready to happen. God will get you through that problem. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not grow weary in doing good for in due season. We will reap, period. No. He says we will reap if we what? Don't give up. If we don't give up. Let us not grow weary in doing good. What do I do in the middle of a problem? I keep doing the word. I keep praying. I keep declaring. I keep serving. I keep doing everything I can do. Why? 
because he said in due season there is a time coming Amos 9 13 says the time will come say that with me the time will come says the Lord when the reaper will overtake the sower when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested what there's a time coming the time will come abundance will come healing will come victory will come breakthrough will come restoration will come children prodigals are coming home the time is coming saith the Lord the time is coming if you don't give up if you don't give up so here's what I'm gonna say if it doesn't look good right now God's not done if it's not good right now God's not done God is working God is moving even when I don't feel it he's working even when I, you know that song we sing, even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. He'll never stop. He'll never stop working. If I was a good singer, I would sing it to you. He'll never stop. He'll never stop working. Man, play that song over and over in your brain until your mind gets renewed to the new idea that God is at work. God is at work. Say that. God is at work. I'm telling you, God is at work. The time will come. Listen, the difficulty does not have to be devastating. It can be your doorway. It can be your delivery truck. God wants to do something new in your life, your family, your business, your marriage, your finances. God wants to do something new. Let that problem, let that difficulty be your delivery truck. Hallelujah. You know, in 1 Samuel 18 is the story of David and Goliath. You know, David did not reach the throne until after he cared for the sheep. He slayed the bear. He slayed the lion, and he took Goliath's head off. I want you to think about that. The throne didn't come for him. He didn't reach the throne. He wasn't promoted until after he faced the problems, until after he faced the giants. And trust me, Goliath was a big problem, a big problem. But, he was on, but, but Goliath was on the path to David reaching the throne. Did you know that? Goliath was part of the, the preparation so that David was ready when he got to the throne. He was ready to rule. He was ready. He was ready for it. Why? Because he tended the sheep. He spent time fellowshipping with God. He spent time worshiping God, uh, worshiping God when nobody was looking. Nobody was looking. Nobody saw what he was doing. He was behind the scenes, tending the sheep, taking care of the sheep, managing the sheep, falling in love with the heart of God. Fall, are you listening to me? Falling in love with the heart of God. Falling in love with the heart of God. You've got to fall in love with the heart of God to be trusted with the big stuff. We've got to fall in love with the heart of God. And he was willing, no matter what, to protect those sheep. He slayed the bear. He slayed the lion as if it were nothing. Why? Because he had a, a love for the heart of God, a love for the sheep that he was called to tend. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. All right, number two. Number two, you've got to know who you are, and you've got to put it in your mouth. You've got to know who you are, and you've got to put it in your mouth. It will require faith. To become everything God wants you to be every day. Say every day. Every day. God has called us to walk by faith. God has called us. God's not called us to do anything that will not require faith. And the bigger the assignment, the more faith it's going to take. So we learn how to operate in faith where we are. And we develop our faith. And the Bible says our faith becomes perfected on the level where we are but remember we want more don't we we want more I want more of God I want to do more things for the kingdom of God I know that we don't know how much time we've got left on this earth Jesus could come back anytime say anytime anytime so we got work to do we've got people I want to have I want to help populate heaven amen Psalm 107 2 says let the redeemed of the Lord say so let the redeemed of the Lord do what say so let the healed of the Lord say so let the victorious of the Lord say so let the blessed of the Lord say blessed let the highly favored say so let the anointed say so so I'm doing that 
We're driving in the car. Father, I thank you. I'm anointed of God. I thank you, Father, that you've called me. I thank you that the Holy Ghost is my helper. Holy Spirit, I want to thank you right now in advance for helping me this weekend, for sustaining me this weekend. I thank you for pouring out your glory on the women. Excuse me. Prayed over you guys, over the worship team. Father, I thank you. I'm not asking you to. I'm thanking you for doing it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let them say so. Activate you, who you are. Quit worrying about what somebody else is doing or not doing. You mind your business, right? You take care of yourself. You activate you, who you're supposed to be. You activate yourself. Pull out the best in you. Talk to it. Stir yourself up. Call yourself a mighty woman of God. Father, I thank you that I'm a mighty woman of God. I am powerful. I'm yielded to the Holy Ghost. I thank you that signs and wonders and miracles follow me because I deliver the word and they accompany the word. So, Father, I'm thanking you for signs and wonders and miracles. I thank you lives are going to be changed. It's not because of who I am, but I know who lives in me. I know that I am one spirit with him, and if it's in him, guess what? It's in me. Because everything that's in God resides where? In me. Everything God can do abides in me. Nothing is impossible with him. And he's living in me. Nothing is impossible. He said, oh, Lord God, is anything, is there anything too difficult for me? Is, is there anything too hard for me? No, nothing is too hard for you. Lord God, there's nothing too hard for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. So when it looks impossible to me, it's just right for you. Did you know impossible things are happening every day? Impossible things are happening every day, and not just for Cinderella. Impossible things are happening every day, every single day, because of who he is and who we have on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a pulse, God has a purpose. If you have a pulse, God has a plan. Don't waste your message, ladies. Don't waste your message. Where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be. It doesn't mean you like it, but you have to trust him. Doesn't mean we always like where we are, what's going on around us. He never said, you know, Tanya, you have to like it. No, you don't have to like it, but guess what? I trust him. I trust him that he knows the path I'm on. And he's, he's, got a, he's got a plan in mind, right? He's got a purpose. He's taken me to the other side. Just like he did the disciples. Remember when they got in the boat? Jesus was exhausted, so he was asleep in the boat. And what happened? Up came a storm. Up came a storm. And where were they headed? They were headed to the other side. It didn't look like they were going to go to the other side. But you know what they did? The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you know who was in their boat? The Word. And so you know what they did? They woke up the Word. Hallelujah. They woke up the Word. And what did the Word do? He didn't say, let me think a thought. No, he began to declare, peace be still. He commanded the waves to stop. He com and you know where they got? To the other side. They went through it so they could go to it. Glory to God. Don't waste your message. Where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be if you trust him where you are he will get you where you're supposed to be if you trust him where you are he will get you where you're supposed to be listen you've got to talk to yourself you cannot live in fear think fear talk fear disappointment confusion hurt anger and walk in the favor and the blessing of god that was a lot to say that must have been a lot to hear so let me say it again You've got to talk to yourself. You cannot live in fear, think fear, talk fear, or disappointment, confusion, hurt, anger, bitterness, frustration, confusion, and walk in the favor and the blessing of God. Don't let all the questions and what you can't figure out take over your mind and control your future destination, your future direction. We let the Word direct us. The word is your direction. Oh, hallelujah. You have got to trust him. Now listen, Mark Hankins said this, and it's one of my favorite things I've ever heard anybody say. 
You are the air traffic control of your own mind. You determine what takes off and what lands. You determine what takes off and what lands. You, you control it. And listen to me, you don't control thoughts with thoughts. You control thoughts with words. Are you listening to me? We don't, we don't, control, we don't, we don't control our thoughts with thoughts. We control our thoughts with what? With words, with words. All right, listen to this. Isaiah, spoken words, spoken words. Isaiah 59, 19 says, When the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him and put him to flight. I was meditating on that verse, oh, a couple weeks ago. And the Lord spoke to me and he says, What is the standard? The Bible says that the Spirit of God will lift up a standard. Do you know what the standard is? The Word. He will lift up the Word against the enemy. What defeats the enemy every time? The Word. The spoken Word. Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. I'm not going to read all of it to you, but Jesus was led by the Spirit, and he ended up in the wilderness where he was tempted by the devil. And Jesus answered him with the word. You know, Jesus is the pattern son. That's what the Bible says. He came and he was the firstborn, the Bible calls it, among many brethren. We're the many brethren. He was the firstborn. He was the seed planted in the earth. God planted Jesus in the earth expecting to receive a harvest of sons and daughters. He was the pattern son. Why did he come? To show us how to do it. We ought to be spending so much time reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. The life of Jesus. Looking at how he did it. Looking at what he did. When he faced a problem, how did he handle it? How did he treat people? How did he take care of his staff? I'm telling you, we can learn. He was the pattern son. And here's what he said. When the enemy came what, and, and Satan tempted him, what did he do? He said, it is written, thus saith the, the Lord. Thus saith Almighty God, it is written, it is written. Every single time, not just the first time, here comes the devil again. And what did he say? It is written. So when the devil knocks once, it is written. When he knocks again, it is written, it is written. What is supposed to come out of our mouth when we're under the attack of the enemy? It is written. The Word, the Word, the Word. We're going to have to be women of the Word. And then the last time it said that Jesus said, Be gone, Satan. And the devil departed from him. And angels came. This is so cool. Angels came and ministered to him. Why? Because they hearken to the voice of the word. You say, oh, now prove that to me. I'm going to prove it right here. Psalm 103.20. Bless the Lord, you his angels. You mighty ones who do his commandments, hearkening to the voice of his word. Do you know we've got angels stationed all around us just waiting to hear the word go forth from our mouth. So I tell the Lord, Father, I thank you for my angels that they're on assignment with me. When I go on an assignment, I take them with me. They follow me. I declare your word, Father, that they watch over me. They keep me. They protect me. They shield me. What do they do? They minister to me. I thank you, Father, that you have angels assigned to me this weekend to minister to me, to encourage me, to strengthen me, to protect me. And what do they hearken to? The voice of his word. Glory. You answer darkness with light. Psalm 119, 105 says, His word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. What is the answer for darkness? We don't have to get all worked up over darkness. Light. Light is the answer. The darker the world gets, what is going to be the answer? The church, the light. What do you say? You are the light of the world, not the light of the church. You are the light of what? The world. Say it again. The world. Say it again. The world. I'm a light. I'm the light of the world. He said, don't hide your light. We've got Christians who are so afraid they hide their light. It's time for us to be bold. That was my word for this year, was bold. And I thought, oh, dear Lord, 
I'm already bold. He said, I need you to be bolder. I need you to be bolder. I need you to walk it out. I need you to find a new level somewhere, get hold of it, and walk in it. Bold, bold. You answer darkness with light. You defeat the enemy with the word. Isaiah 55, 11. It says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my, what? My mouth. Say mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it prospers wherever I send it. Wherever I send the word, the word is going to prosper. The word is going to produce fruit. Glory to God. You defeat the enemy with the word. You answer lies with the truth. You know, isn't it interesting how people in the church and Christians spend so much time talking about what the devil says? How do you know his voice so clearly and so well? Anything contrary to the word, we should say, that's not the voice of the good shepherd. That's not my thought. When a thought comes, it doesn't align up with the word of God and the, the blessing, favor, and increase of God. I just say, you know, that's not my thought. That's what I do. When it comes, I just say, you know what? That's not my thought. That thought may be came, but it came to go because that's not my thought. I'm one with the Father. If the Father's not thinking I'm going under, then I'm not thinking it. The Bible says that, that um, he is for me, not against me. Did you know God is for you? God is for you. So any thought that doesn't line up with that is a thought from the devil. And how do, what do we do when, when there's a lie spoken into our ear? We answer it with the truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17 says, the word of God is truth. The word of God is truth. Psalm 138, 2 says, he honors his word above his name. That's the honor God gives his word. He's good for his word. Jeremiah 1, 12 says, he watches over his word and he hastens to perform it. If I want things to change in my life, you know what I do? Quickly get the word, quickly get the word, quickly get a word, get a word from God. Why? Because God is looking. It says he's watching over his word. Where's my word? Where can I find my word? Where can I find somebody declaring my word? I'm watching over it because you know what I do? I perform my word. I perform my word. The smartest thing we could do as women of God is become women of the word. You get in the word and the word will get in you. Listen to me. You get in the word and the word will get in you. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Faith, faith calls things that be not as though they were. Faith calls things that be not. That's the faith of God who calls, he says, light be and light was. What did he do? When it, go, go back to Genesis 1, and then you know what he did? He gave us, he gave Adam the authority and the dominion in the garden. And what happened? Things went up, turned upside down. Why? Adam didn't walk in his authority. God, Adam didn't walk in his authority. You have been given dominion. You have been given authority. When things don't line up with the word of God, we don't have to accept them. God's word is the final word. Say that with me. God's word is the final word. Faith calls things that be not as though they were. Stand on your feet with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say with me, I refuse to quit. I refuse to give up. I am not a quitter. I am not a quitter. I am not a quitter. I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher. Look at your girlfriend sitting next to you. Say, I'm a finisher. I'm a finisher, and God has an assignment for me. I was born for this moment in time. This is my time. Say it again. This is my time. I am ready. I am strong. I am determined, and I will do it. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. We're going to do it. Just do it. Just do it. Oh, my goodness. Are you so excited? Next time you're in Starbucks, next time you're at the nail salon, what do you do? You're going to be bold. You're looking for somebody. What are you going to do when you go to the grocery store next time? You're on assignment. See, everywhere you go, you're on assignment. You're on assignment. Oh. On assignment. We are women on assignments. I've got an assignment. One day I had my schedule plotted out for the day. We sell, we sell real estate in Oklahoma City. 
remember when I told you that I am highly favored, I walk in the blessing, and I experience increase. So we started a luxury brokerage in a company that was in Oklahoma, that was in Oklahoma City. I was in my late 50s. I'm in my very early 60s for your information. Just saying. Okay, so I went there. There were 300 other agents in that agency. That's a lot. That's a lot of real estate agents. But remember, there's just something in me. There's just something in me. A lot of young ones. And the young ones, they're brilliant. They know all the IT stuff. And I'm a paper and pencil girl. And so I went in there just walking in the favor of God. When I left that company, I had outsold any, and they had been in business for I don't know how many years. I had outsold any agent that had ever in the history of that company. I was a woman, and I was almost 60 years old. I'm telling you, don't tell me God can't do it. Don't tell me God can't raise you up. Promote, promote, promote. I'm telling you, it's never, it's never enough for God. God wants you to believe bigger because God wants to show off. God wants to send signs, wonders, and miracles. God's got big plans for you. God's not thinking small about you today. He's thinking big. Father, reveal to us your will for our lives. Show us a, a foretaste of glory divine. God, you said, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. That's Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me. I will answer you. And I want to show you great and mighty things that you don't know. When you don't know what to do, say, Father, your word says, call upon you and you will answer me and you will show me great and mighty things. You'll show me things I don't know. God, I need information on this. I need to know what to do in this situation. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every beautiful, amazing, incredibly highly anointed, blessed, favored woman of God in my midst. We, I am in the presence of greatness. Say this with me. I am a big deal. Say it again. I am a big deal. We should say that over and over until we believe. See, I believe God is a big deal. Do you? I don't have a problem saying God's a big deal. You know where he lives? He lives on the inside of me. God, you're a big deal. I'm a big deal because I carry God. I'm a big deal. If you're in the grocery store and I'm in the grocery store, I want to yell, anybody in this grocery store right now? And I don't go to the grocery store very often. But when I'm there, I want to yell, you're a big deal because I'm in this. It's a big deal that I'm here, number one. <laughs> number two... It's a big deal I'm, because I'm a big deal because I'm carrying God on the inside of me. It's a big deal. You want to be in the grocery store with me. You want to be where I am. Why? Because I'm a big deal. You're a big deal. I want you to see yourself that way. You know, we think, oh, that just sounds bad. See, that's, that's the enemy has distorted the way we think to the point that we don't think we're worth anything. We don't think we're worthy of anything. We don't think we're worthy of the blessing of God. If that were the case, nobody would ever do anything. Because there's nobody you read about in the Bible that didn't have plenty of junk going on in their life. And I remind myself that when the devil starts reminding me, I say, oh, well, you know what? I'm so glad you asked. Have a seat. Let me tell you about David. Let me tell you about Esther. Let me tell you about Rahab the harlot. Let me tell you about, I just go through the list. Nobody would ever have done anything for God if they had to be perfect. You are just right for God. Can you believe I just said that? You are just right for him to do something magnificent through. You are sensational. You're stunning. You're brilliant. You're smart. You have everything you need to accomplish, everything he's called you to do. You have the ability to manage the gift he put on the inside of you. He wouldn't have put it in you if he didn't think you could manage it. But you don't know what I did. I don't care what you did. Quit looking at that. Quit talking about that. Especially if it's gross and you don't like it. Why do we go around talking about it? 
Like, I want to forget that stuff. How about you? And we got to stop looking at each other, remembering the one time you did whatever you did. Who cares? Who cares? You know, I'm not going to hang around people that can't champion my cause. My cause is the kingdom of God. And I'm, I plan on spending my time by people that celebrate the gift of God on the inside of me, that champion my cause, which is the kingdom, that I can hook up with to go higher with, not that pull me down and keep me grounded. I'm telling you now, it's time for us to arise. It's time for you to arise. Father, in the name of Jesus, lift both hands up. I loose these women to rise up. I loose them to stand up. I loose them to stand out. I loose them to walk in the blessing of the Lord. I loose them to be highly favored. I loose the favor on their lives to give them preferential treatment, to bring them before great men. You said that the gift on the inside of us would bring us before great men. It's the gift of who you've called us to be that opens the door, not us. It's the gift of God. It's the gift from heaven. It's the gift, sir, of who you are in my life that opens all the great doors for me. That's the word, girls. I'm not making, it almost sounds like I'm making that up, doesn't it? It sounds so incredible. So, Father, I take it. I'll take it. I'll take it all, Father. Bring me to a place where I can do more and more and more for the kingdom. So put your hand here again. We stir up those gifts on the inside of us. He said, stir yourself up. Stir yourself up. You, see, I, I could call you all up here and lay hands on you and anoint you with oil. But guess what? You've got to go home and you know what you've got to do? You've got to learn how to stir yourself up. There's not always somebody there. There's not always somebody there to stir me up. So I had to learn, you know what? When David's men, when they came back from Ziklag, all the women and the children had been kidnapped. And the men decided they weren't so sure if he was such a great, uh, such a hot leader. And the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. He encouraged, sometimes we have to encourage ourselves because nobody else is like on the team today. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, God's on your team. The Holy Ghost is on your team. The Word's on your team. You got it going on. God can turn anything around. Any mistake you make, God turns your mess into your message. God will turn your mess into your message. I've got so many messages I could preach to you today. I think I brought 10 with me in my folder. But I'm telling you, just the story of my life, I could stand up here for a week and tell you about all the junk in my life and what God has brought me through. But more important, what God's brought me to. So right now, we shake off all the junk, all the stupid stuff we've done, all the stupid mistakes we've made, all the sin when we willfully, we knew we shouldn't do it, and we did it anyway. Can you relate to that? I'm the front, the front of that line. I, I would know I shouldn't do that because I knew it was sin. And go right ahead and do it. Who does that? And just do it anyway. And the Holy Ghost is dealing. How many of you have ever had this happen? Your conscience is speaking loud and clear to you. The Holy Ghost is speaking loud and clear to you, saying, don't say that. Don't say that. Just saying. And then guess what? Before you know it, it's already out there. And I can just see God going, I told you, don't say that. I told, so then you know what he's got to do? Damage control. And he's happy to do it for you. But you know what? It wasn't necessary. If I'd what? Listen to what he said. When he says, don't do it, guess what that means? Don't do it. You don't have to know why. You know, when your babies were little, and, and there's cars in the street, and you don't always have time to explain yourself. When you say, stop, don't run out in the street, but you don't say it like that. You're screaming and you're yelling at them to what? Get their attention so that they don't get hurt. As same with God. We have the nature of God on the inside of us. And he's talking loud. If he has to talk loud, God will talk loud. But I want to learn to listen to the still small voice. I don't want him to lose his voice because he's screaming and yelling at me all the time. D does that make sense? It should because he, he has to do an awful lot of it in the church, Pastor Kathy, to get our attention. But you know what? That's changing today. 
I'm turning, I'm moving in a new direction, and I'm going to listen. And when I get the unction on the inside of me that says, don't say that, I lock it up. When God says, you know what? I need you to go a different direction. Oh, I've got some stories I could tell you on that one. Oh, dear Jesus. We just paid a real expensive car bill. Johnny was at intercessory prayer one night at the church, and the Holy Ghost said to him, go a different way. And that just, you know, he, but he knows the voice of the Holy Spirit, so he knew it was God. But he thought, oh, I'm just going to go the way I always go. What difference could it make? A lot of money difference. Lot, God fixed it. God, we had the money and all that. But I'd have much rather gone shopping on that money <laughs> for something fun and wonderful or given that money to somebody that needed it to pay their light bill than to have to spend it on a car. Why? Because God said, don't do that. And what did we do? Did it anyway. Okay, I don't even know why I'm talking about that. Somebody must need that. But I'm telling you, he's for you. And he's going to bless you. He's going to favor you. And he's going to bring increase. So, so now, put your hand back here. I'm going to close. Father, we, I call forth the increase in Jesus' name. I call forth the more anointing. The more, the more, the stretch, the increase, the enlargement. Enlargement. This is time to be enlarged. And so, Father, I thank you right now. We say yes to you. We're going to plant ourselves. We're going to use the gift on the inside of us. We're going to be good stewards. Say, I'm going to be a good steward. We're going to be good stewards, Father God, so that you can bring the blessing, the increase, and the favor that opens doors for us and takes us places we never dreamed you could take us to. I cover these women with the, the, with the blood of Jesus. I just cover them. I cover them with the blood. Oh, it's there. We've been covered in the blood of Jesus. I speak life and health and wholeness to everything that they do, everything that they touch. I call blessed finances forth in the name of Jesus, provision to come for them. You're turning some of their messes into miracles, and those miracles then become the message that they carry. Oh, Father, I thank you for every woman that gave her time to come and sit in these meetings and stuck it through to the very end that there's a blessing for them father i bless this ministry i bless pastors pat and kathy i bless their family you should pray blessings over your pastors every day father bless them because you know what happens the more blessed they are that blessing just gets on you bless them with more revelation why because i want revelation bless them with revelation bless them father with an anointed walk with you that will take them far high wide all over the world god just anoint them anoint this this ministry i pray that th there be supernatural growth in this church not just spiritual growth but numerical growth because the church is growing, the church is growing, because we're out there doing our job. We're out there walking in our anointings and in our callings. And so the church is growing exceedingly. The church is growing exceedingly. So Father, I thank you for this beautiful weekend. I thank you for the privilege that you gave me to get to partake and to participate in this weekend. And I give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Good, good word. Good, good weekend. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, just a couple of um, things. Let's sit for just a moment. Um, I want to, if you didn't get a chance to give toward Tanya and her ministry last night, we want to be a blessing to her. Maybe God says, give again. I, you know, whatever. You listen to the Holy Spirit. You can give online through... Um, centerpointchurch.tv and you go to the giving part and you give to guest minister not ladies ministry guest minister and that will enable us to get that gift to her right away and um, cash check you can put it in an envelope and you get record of your giving and um, we're just so blessed have you enjoyed her have you enjoyed Tanya being here you want her to come back you want her to come back I do. She inspires me. She helps me. She really does. And so, praise God. I'm just so thankful that you're here. I love you so much. Um, and I love each and every one of you so much. And I appreciate you, each and every one of you, taking the time out of your weekend to be here. And I know you will be blessed. I know that there has been a deposit and an impartation this weekend. And I am believing God that it is fruit that remains. 
Amen? Do you receive that fruit that remains? It will continue to come back and come back and come back and affect your lives and the lives of those around you. Praise God. Um, trying to just think of a couple of things. If you didn't get a chance to get your picture over here, isn't that, a beaut isn't that backdrop beautiful for our picture? That, this turned out so well. And um, one more thing, if any of you can stick around for a little while longer and help us tear down, we got to reset for church tomorrow. So if you, I know they've been a little bit busy out there taking some things down and um, packing some things up, but if you're able to stick around a little while longer, it makes it go so much faster. We had several people last night, and I think we reset everything in about 30 minutes last night because we had so many people helping, and so that was such a blessing. So, hallelujah. Am I missing anything else, Elisa? Am I forgetting anything, Jessica? All right. Well, Father, thank you so much. Whew. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you catch things. When we went to Bible school, we were getting so much every single day. Every single day we would get so much. I mean, three, four, five hours of teaching a day. And you think, oh, Lord, how can I absorb all that? I th that's how I kind of feel about this weekend. But they just encourage us. You're catching things. You're catching things in the spirit. And I believe that there's things that you've caught this weekend that are in the spirit that you will begin to see out months and years ahead. Right? So you just keep praying over the seed that's been planted in you today and yesterday. Just keep praying over it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you don't have your prayer language, come and see me or, or Tanya or, you know, we have several people here that can pray for you to receive your, about the, your prayer language. God wants you to have that so you can pray over yourself and your family and everything. So praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let's go ahead and stand. Thank you, Jesus, for the things that you've imparted. And I thank you that we go out and be everything you've called us to be in Jesus' name for such a time as this. Amen? Amen. All right. We, uh, we will see you next time.